broadcasting live from the Anajar and Levine Studios. Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Shotgun for Lawrence. He's got ETN there to help him protect. He throws. It is intercepted. Masante Samuel steps in. Third pick of the opening quarter. Lawrence in the pocket. Step and throw. Threads the needle. It's a battle for it. And Samuel's got it. Intercepted. Asante Samuel is having a big time performance tonight. Throw. Lawrence looking, throws left corner, touchdown, Marvin Jones wide open, and the Jaguars are roaring back. Lawrence in the pocket, looking for the deep shot, and he's got his man, Zay Jones, separation, touchdown, Jacksonville. Lawrence drifts back, throws, end zone, near side, hold in, Christian Kirk, touchdown, Jacksonville. Jacksonville was down 27 to nothing. And here we go. Man. Madison, the snapper. Cook, the holder. Patterson sweeps the leg. 36 yard attempt. It is good. The Chargers are out of the playoffs. Pandemonium at TIAA Bank Stadium. This is going to be a long flight home. A long off season and absolutely inexplicable. There are no words to describe what we witnessed here tonight. It's Monday morning madness on ESPN 690. Your chance to review, react, and respond to yesterday's Jags game. Monday morning madness is brought to you by the Fields Auto Group. Now, Monday Morning Madness on Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio, ESPN 690. Here's Brett Martineau. Oh, it's one we'll never forget here in Jacksonville, that's for sure. I believe it's an eight-day stretch we'll never forget in Jacksonville. This one was so good it made you forget a little bit how good the Tennessee Titans game was the previous Saturday. And now the Jags get another Saturday added to this 2022 football season that has certainly blended into the calendar year of 2023. Deeper than anybody thought it could go. Is there a chance? Is there a chance this season gets to February? First things first, the Kansas City Chiefs on Saturday and an epic win on Saturday against the L.A. Chargers in comeback fashion. Brent Martin, along with Casey Kurtz, and uh, hello to everybody on ESPN 690, all our social media platforms, and a special good morning and hello on this Monday after a big Jags win. To folks listening in on WOKV 104.5. And we also say hello to Rich Jones, who's going to jump in with us for the next hour. We'll take you until 9 o'clock on 104.5 WOKV. We'll hang with you until 10 o'clock here on ESPN 690. And your call's welcome, 904-362-9901. We've had a day to decompress, a day to digest it, a day to not be stunned anymore. And it doesn't matter, at 8 o'clock in the morning, here on a Monday, I'm still kind of stunned. That did happen. The Jags were down 27 to nothing. And maybe above anything else, not just the comeback, is the moxie, the mental toughness, and just how good the quarterback in Jacksonville really is. Trevor Lawrence showed it all on Saturday night. The bad and the good, and I'm not sure we've seen performances like that in a single game in sports. Michael Jordan, does he go for 15 and then shoot 14 out of 15 the next, the rest of the game? Have we seen Joe Montana do something like that? Tom Brady do something like that? Probably not too much in sports in terms of examples of players being able to overcome disaster performances and in what Trevor Lawrence called his worst half of football of his life, and he turned it into one of the greatest moments in Jacksonville Jaguars history. Casey Kurtz, good morning. Rich Jones, good morning. Thanks for coming on over to the sports side of things, Rich Jones. I love this. This is so much fun to actually be over here on the sports side of things. Usually I'm the one interviewing you on WOKV after a game, but this was too big. This was too big of a game, too big of a win, too big of a moment for the city of Jacksonville and for Jaguars Nation to not spend at least some time to 
decompress and to really celebrate. And to your point, Brent, and I texted with you yesterday, and you said, yeah, I think I got three hours of sleep last night. I'm, I hope a nap is in store. I was in touch with friends and family all day yesterday, and we were just beaming about what we experienced. If you were at the game or if you watched at home or listened on the radio or wherever you were at a sports bar, just to be able to have that day afterward to say, Man, that just happened, and it really did happen, and in an incredible fashion. We're blessed to have a phenomenal team, and we have been for over 25 years in Jacksonville, but to finally have the head coach and the franchise quarterback, and then he goes to Waffle House on top of it. In the <laughs> ultimate Duval thing, take that Tony Kornheiser all these years later. It only took us since 2005 to finally say, Tony, stick it to you, man. Trevor was at the Waffle House in Jack's Beach. That was something. <laughs> it was awesome, man. Now they are, they are the darling of the playoffs, and they've got everybody's attention, and Trevor Lawrence does. Doug Peterson has had with that Lombardi Trophy already. Casey Kurtz, I hope you used that credit card to get the frost off your windshield, Amen, and you made brother. it in. Hey, I made it in. Uh, appreciate the help you didn't give, Brent. Thank goodness I put Rich on the text because I'd still be in the driveway trying to get out, Brent. <laughs> Laughing emojis don't Sorry. help when my windshield is frozen. Come on. Come on, that Florida, Florida guy. I thought you were from Indiana. You didn't know how to do that. That huh? was the first moment in my life I was like, this is going to be tough. What am I going to do? This is this is a moment that I have no clue what to do with. I mean, it's frozen. So I did the windshield wipers. Nothing happened. It just made a noise, and I was like, Oh, we're stuck here. Yeah, you never do the boiling water or warm water. Always do the credit card. I think we'll have to buy you an ice scraper just so you have it. Like the three times a decade that this happens, yeah, you, you'll it'll come in handy. It'll be I was just something ready. that's tucked away, but you weren't ready. But that's it, okay. You it, made it. I made it. <laughs> On time. <laughs> it it reminds know. me as the Jaguars are about to go play Kansas City on Saturday, 430 game now. Another Saturday game for the Jacksonville Jaguars against a well-rested Kansas City team. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today, but also a lot about that during the weekend. We'll be in Kansas City, uh, I don't know, maybe a decade back. We were on the road in Kansas City, had to rent a car to cover the Jags. And the photographer that I was with, he was a Florida guy. And he looks in the car, the rental car, and they got one of those uh, uh, ice scrapers and snow brushes. And he's like, what is this? He had never seen one before. And uh, there you go, Casey Kurtz. Uh, I think you probably know what that is, but now you know a new new trick of the trade on a frosty uh, best, Monday morning. And that was the thing on Saturday night. It, it was cold. It was one of the coldest games in Jags history, and Trevor Lawrence was ice cold. And that's really what this story is all about because for a 23-year-old young man, number one overall pick a couple of years ago, this is why you drafted him, to change the franchise. This is what you thought he could do, change the franchise. And by the way, he already has. He had a big-time second half of the season. He gets you to the postseason. He played excellent football. He's developing after some of the scar tissue of his first year and a half. And to do this, I just can't get over it. I can't get over the mental side of it. This is not normal. I want to make sure people know that. If you're a casual sports fan, this is not normal. If you throw four interceptions in the game, you go in the tank, especially if it's in the first two quarters of the football game. In this moment, in your first playoff pass, you throw an interception, and then you're able to pull yourself out of that, and your team rallies around you, and then you start making plays and making throws and throw four touchdowns to not just get your team back in it, but help win the football game. I just don't know, Casey, if people can fully wrap their arms around that side of it uh, because it really isn't a normal situation. I use the uh, comparison all week. I'm a baseball guy. If you go give up eight runs, nine runs, ten runs in the first inning, first of all, you never go back out there. They don't put you back never out once. there. I tried but, multiple times. <laughs> but, but you wouldn't want to go out there. That's the point. Like You wouldn't want to go out there, and you sure as heck would not go shut out the other team most likely for the next eight innings. It's just not a common thing what we saw in sports. Sports. Not just the comeback, but the mental fortitude and the ability to convince himself on Saturday night because he told us in the post game he had to convince himself that he can do this, and he did. He did. And I'm telling you, Brent, I had the tweets ready to go. We're going to see C.J. Beathard and Chase Daniel in this football game. What a moment. That's where it was going, and it was going in that direction. But to your point, you rarely get the opportunity to write a four, or yeah, make a four-interception game right, a five-turnover game right. And he did that. And, I mean, that was that was the moment. I think people in the chat, people listening, wherever you're listening, probably still can't believe it because I can't believe it. And it's, it just says things about this guy that we believed 
when they drafted him, we questioned last year and through the middle of this season. And in the middle of the, or in the start of the game, we questioned it too. Like, uh oh, this could undo everything he's done that's been good. But man, he figured it out. And now everyone's on the same page that this guy is if you weren't already, this guy's something special and it's clear. It's obvious. Even though he threw four interceptions. Ain't that something? What a game. Man. <laughs> that is something rich well, Joe. Brent, you <laughs> tweeted about the po- possibility of him getting benched, didn't you? I mean, I think I was following right along and, and just about everyone in Jags Nation, even the the diehards were like, we can't come back from this. Not since probably Mark Brunel and, and we weren't here during the Brunel days, but not since Mark Brunel probably have the Jaguars had a quarterback where you could actually feel confident. Would you feel confident with Blaine Gabbert coming back from four picks? <laughs> no. Blake Bortles? No. David Garrard? No. Even Leftwich? Nope. Maybe and, and, Brunel. Maybe. And maybe, right? And and because he had built up some equity, right? Yeah. So I, I, think, uh, I, I think what we saw there just can't be, oh, yeah, that's cool that he did what a lot of people do, and it just didn't happen that way. So that was the cool part of it. And uh, please don't bring up my tweets from the first half. Rich <laughs> no, please yeah. bring them Everyone up, Rich said Jones. It. <laughs> Everyone said it. And I, I think you and I were chatting about this yesterday, Brent. I, I, I grew up in Metro Detroit as a Lions fan. They are my first team because I was born into that team. So I have seen the lovable loser. I have dealt with loss and disappointment year after year after year. I've never seen them uh, make it to the NFC Championship. I've seen one playoff win my entire Entire life and I'm in my 40s at this point and yet I was the one with the fans around me Jags fans saying at 27 nothing there's too much time left I've seen crazier things happen you can't give up on this team right now and maybe it's because of the scar tissue from being not only a Lions fan but also more than 16 years now of being a Jaguars fan and adopted into the franchise here it's too much time left you can't necessarily write this this team off and any game off in the NFL with as pass happy as the the team is and then knowing the confidence that this team has had over the last what six seven eight weeks in a row yeah I'll give you a little quick a quick story up in the press box uh, we were uh, obviously talking about this game and sometimes you kind of you don't shout across, but someone's a little further away, and you're like talking, like, "Is this really happening?" You know, we're all kind of doing this. We watch this team play. We watch a lot of football, and there was uh, I was kind of standing up at this time, around, off my seat, and talking to a couple folks. And I said, when he threw his fourth interception, "Are they going to bench him and consider taking him out just from a scar tissue standpoint? Like, what are you going to do to this young man if he throws six, seven interceptions in this game and has that many turnovers? Like, how damaging is that?" for down the road. And I mean, it crossed my mind. And I said that like out loud, kind of a, not loud, loud, but loud enough for, uh, to travel over a couple of seats away. And there are, what later I determined was a bunch of Jag scouts, not too far. And I got this like audible, like, are you crazy? Like, we're going to take them out of the game. Look at me. <laughs> and uh, They're like, we don't, you don't do that, man. You know, but I actually did think about it. Like, how damaging would this be for down the road? I, I think right now it's hard for people to put themselves back in their mental frame of mind when he had thrown a fourth interception. But if you are honest with yourself and you started thinking about all these different things, not about winning the football game, but about the future and how much is this going to stain what he did in the second half of the year to develop? And how much will this stain even an AFC South championship? Because this is your lasting memory, not a playoff loss, not a, okay, it was a mixed bag of of performance. No, an historic, awful performance is what he was looking at. And then to flip the switch and turn it around. And now the Jags are going to Kansas City to take on the mighty, mighty Kansas City Chiefs on Saturday. We're just getting rolling here on a... Monday Morning Madness, presented by Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. And we have much, much more to come. Rich Jones joining us until 9 o'clock. We're on 104.5 WOKV. Good to have you on this Monday morning. We're always on ESPN 690, and we've expanded coverage all week on ESPN 690, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. with special morning madnesses all week long as the Jaguars are still alive in the postseason. More with Casey Kurtz, more with Rich Jones, more with you, 904-362-9901. We'll be right back. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. 
Mostly sunny with afternoon temps in the mid to upper 60s on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It'll be feeling pretty nice, all things considered, especially when you're in the bright sun. Skies stay partly to mostly clear tonight and cool, but not as cold. Overnight lows in the 40s instead of the 30s. And we're mostly sunny Tuesday, still pleasant. Highs in the 70s. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sema. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. Before you buy a diamond anywhere, shop Beards Diamonds. Have you seen your financial freedom wiped out by stock market volatility? It's Rich Jones. Consider investing in real estate funds from DLP Capital. Don Wenner is CEO and founder. DLP Capital has provided our investors with consistent double-digit returns by investing in cash-flowing residential real estate. For more than a decade, we have had zero losses, little volatility, and have shot above our return targets in all of our investment funds. Plus, we offer monthly distributions and tax shelter opportunities. To get your investor's guide and learn more, dial star star invest on your cell phone or visit highyieldreturns.net. Fields Auto Group is a proud sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and buying or leasing a luxury car on the First Coast is easy with Fields Auto Group, Jacksonville's luxury auto group, Lexus of Jacksonville and Orange Park, Mercedes-Benz of Jacksonville Orange Park, Jaguar Land Rover Jacksonville, Porsche Jacksonville, and where my wife leases her car from Fields Cadillac Jacksonville and St. Augustine. If the luxury car you want isn't in stock, no problem. Fields Auto Group will order it and at a fair price. So stop by a Fields store today and see what world-class service really means. FieldsAuto.com. The Eagles Hotel California Tour. Welcome to the Hotel California. Live in concert with a full orchestra. Take it. Performing their iconic the album, Hotel California, One beginning to end, time. plus a greatest hit set. The, the Eagles. Five Star nights. Veterans Memorial Arena, Saturday, March 25th. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. This message is sponsored by the Florida A&M University Medical Marijuana Education and Research Initiative, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and this radio station. Mary on Demand is live. Start your marijuana education journey today. Learn at your own pace and check out the Medical Marijuana Education Series. You decide what you'd like to learn and win with Mary on Demand. Visit mary.famu.edu. That's M-M-E-R-I.F-A-M-U.edu. And remember, recreational marijuana is still illegal in Florida. Mary, educate, learn, talk. Start your new year in a like new car from the pre-owned experts at Arlington Toyota. Arlington pre-owned has over 300 used available. All makes, all models, some even same model year. You gotta see it. And when it comes to buying with confidence, just leave it to my friends at Arlington. Their 30-day exchange program comes with your purchase. That's 30 days to love your pre-owned purchase or exchange it. Add some major excitement to your new year and an amazing new ride from Arlington Toyota pre-owned. In person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online anytime at Arlington Toyota. As America's largest injury firm, we have advantages few others do. Our results and reputation are well known to the other side, and we have a track record of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and winning big. But what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your case? I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. One of the things we are most proud about is that we set up our firm so that your case gets lots of attention from a lot of people. Our technology and army of lawyers give us insight and oversight into every detail and every moment of your case. Paralegals, legal assistants, investigators, buildings with boxes of evidence, every resource carefully designed to get you the most possible. And at Morgan & Morgan, we even have a dedicated team to make sure that your calls are returned that very same day. Injured, dial pound law. That's pound 529. All law firms are not the same. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. ForThePeople.com. Injured? Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Listen to ESPN 690 anytime, anywhere, on any device. Whether you're at home or on the go, get the latest on the Jags, FSU, the Jumbo Shrimp, and Action Sports Jacks on odyssey.com. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y.com or on ESPN 690.com. Hey, welcome back to a Monday Morning Madness. We've been doing this all season long, and what a year to debut this show. And now we've expanded it all week long during the playoffs, uh, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Brent Martineau along with Casey Kurtz and you. It's a call-in show. It's a jump in the YouTube chat, and we've got plenty doing that and on Twitter as well. So this is your show to sound off about the Jags' win or loss all season. And well, right now you're winning if you're going on, and the Jags continue to do that. We'll take you until 10 o'clock. And special today, we have Rich Jones with us 
Jacksonville legend Rich oh, Jones stop. with us on the sports <laughs> side of things on 104.5 WOKV. Love hanging out with Rich and glad to have him along. Appreciate the FM dial for an hour this morning as well. Uh, they're going to hang out with our show until 9 a.m. on 104.5 WOKV. So uh, happy to have everyone. And you can call in this number, 904-362-9901, a familiar number on the ESPN side. That will be a new number on the WOKV uh, side of things. But uh, 904-362-9901, and you catch all our shows on social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all the apps, ESPN690.com, and uh, in your car as well. Hey, let me, I'm going to ask a simple question, guys, and something that stands out, puts you on the spot. What comes to mind if I say, what was the moment in the game, the play in the game? There are a million of them. We can dissect it. It will be. You can do an hour show on just the key plays. Is there something that jumps out, Casey Kurtz, that says, this was the moment you started to say, this might really happen, or it did happen. I mean, I would like to sit here and tell you it was when Evan Ingram scored a touchdown at the end of the first half. But no, it wasn't. It I wasn't. wouldn't believe you. It wasn't. I'm, I'm telling you it wasn't. I'm just saying that was at least I was like, hey, covering the spread, man. <laughs> hey, all they right. got a hey, touchdown. All right. Um, <laughs> the rating is not 0.6 gonna, for Trevor they're Lawrence. They're going to score. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, listen, I think when Marvin Jones scored, when uh, you know that prediction came true that I said in the pregame show, no big deal. Uh, when Marvin Jones scored, I was like, you know. Maybe this is that team. And then you couple that with the Chargers not really trying to run the ball. You couple that with, you know, how I feel about Brandon Staley, Brent. <laughs> oh, it came true. Guy coached him out of a win. So uh, all those things put together, I was like, ah, oh, there's a chance. And when you got Trevor Lawrence, I guess anything's possible. So I will say that. Uh, but then, you know, as it continued on and Doug Peterson calling really the, the second half of his life, especially uh, at the end with going for two and all of that. So uh, I will say when Marvin Jones scored, I thought maybe, just maybe. That's when I start sending the eyeball emojis to all my friends like, uh, this could happen. Yeah, Rich Jones, you got something that sticks out in your mind. That long throw, that was to Zay, Zay Jones, Jones, right? Yeah, yes. that, that that to me was the moment where it felt like there was actually a turning point, and I think it was because of how perfect that throw was, how wide open he was, and more than anything, because we were in a position where we had a lot of Chargers fans around us, and they, from the word go, from what, the second pass of the game, that was a pick, uh, early on in the first quarter, they were in the Jaguars fans' faces. They weren't bad, but they were normal fans, and they were pretty rabid, and they get up 27 nothing. they're talking smack. But once that Zay Jones pass for the touchdown happened, I, I you could see the look wash away a little bit from delirious to worry. And that was the moment where I felt like, we got a game. And I think that was what came out of my mouth. I said, now we got a game. At least it's competitive. You may lose. You may still get throttled in the fourth quarter and lose 40 to 21. But at least at that moment, I felt as though there was a turning point. And from that point forward, and then to see the Jags only give up a field goal late in the, the third quarter, I think, or maybe early fourth quarter, that also was the second moment where, okay, the defense is finally stepping up. But I was waiting the whole second half for a turnover, for the Jags to get a turnover. Like, they have been so opportunistic, and that moment never came, and that's what's even more stunning about ultimately what happened if you watch football a lot to see that they had five turnovers, five. The doink off the helmet on that punt return, just incredible to see that they were able to win after five turnovers in the game, and all five in the first half. Stunning, but I would say that Zay Jones pass. Yeah, it's a good one, and that was like, whoa! Like a place to rock, got the place rocking right, yeah. right there. And yep. now you had a chance, and even down ten in the fourth quarter, you felt like, okay, they can do this. I'm going to give you mine, and then I think there are a couple to pick from. But let's get to Steven on the line right now here on Monday Morning Madness and get some callers in. We're going to break here in a couple minutes, and we have much, much more to get to. So hang on the line at nine zero four three six two nine nine zero one. Steven, what's up? Happy Monday morning. Ah, uh, thank you. Brent, I appreciate it. Oh, man, it was cold out there Saturday night. <laughs> uh, Toes are yeah, cold, baby. And, and, and I feel what he's saying. I mean, I, I almost got into it with a Charger fan out there. But, um, anyways, i got to give it up to the guys. It's hard to pick a play. I think the Zay Jones play was a good turnaround as well. But, but i got to give it up to the defense, not giving up a touchdown in the second half for, what, like four weeks in a row right now? Yeah. And, for Roy Robertson Harris to do something that hasn't been done, you know, seven tackles, four tackles for loss, a sack, two passes batted. I mean, this defense has just been bowing up in the second half. But I, I, I got to ask you a question, Brent, right now. I know everybody in the 
for the AFC title wants to see the rematch between Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. I know that's what the NFL wants. But nobody can tell me they don't want to see a rematch for winner take all for AFC title between Burrow and Lawrence part two. Yeah, that would be uh, pretty cool stuff. I, I think, I don't know if nobody would say that, but I think everybody's clamoring for Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes in the NFL, but I get what you're saying. I don't think you can lose with these matchups. That's the point. Steven, thanks for the call, man. We'll talk to you a little bit later. 904-362-9901. I'm going to give you my moment, and then you can pick, keep picking for moments, and we'll get your responses. But the moment for me is when Zay Jones makes that catch, and it looks like it's a tough one. Brandon Staley challenges it, and you could see the fear and panic and nervousness on the sideline of the Chargers in that moment like if we don't get this is this thing really going to happen the doubt started to happen in my opinion uh for staley and that chargers sideline and then it did happen all the other plays the two-point conversion the fourth and one and the final kick at the gun for riley patterson it's monday morning madness brent martin O'Casey kurtz special appearance by rich jones we're on 104.5 wokv and we're right here on espn 690 more to come including your thoughts what was the biggest turnaround moment in that football game for you and the jacks we'll be right back In case you were wondering, Rasheen Mathis, big Trevor Lawrence guy. He rode out to his left and made a play to Agnew, I yes, believe. Yes, yes, that's the play. On the sideline, I was like, like that's Mahomes, that's Lamar, that's Josh Allen. It, it's not too many quarterbacks that's going to make that throw. You know, even scramble like that, find, find his way out of the pocket with poise and make that type of throw. Like, that's, that's big time football. Hear more from Rasheen every Monday at 4 p.m., only on ESPN 690. As a business owner, wouldn't it be nice if you could eliminate all the waste on advertising to people who just aren't ready to buy from you? What if you could spend your marketing dollars talking solely to people who are ready to buy a product you sell? Cox Media Group has a very large database to help you reach those exact people. Cox Media Group offers a program called Omni Channel that starts with an email to your ideal customer who's ready to buy now, and then once they open the email, they will start seeing your message on Facebook and through display ads and video ads. Let us answer any questions you have by heading to cmg.com to find out more. That's cmg.com. Hey, this is Bruce. And I'm Kara. We're the owners of Koala Insulation. Fall is finally here and hopefully so are milder temperatures. But don't wait to insulate your home. Take advantage of 20% savings off our summer rates and start saving on those utility bills now and all those hot summers to come. Give us a call and set up your free evaluation at 679-6282 or find us online at koalainsulation.com. Blackwater Soul Review returns to the St. Augustine Amphitheater in April featuring J.J. Gray and Mofro, Brothers of a Feather with Chris and Rich Robinson of the Black Crows, Lucas Nelson and the Promise of Real, Robert Cray Band, and Jackie Venson. Blackwater Soul Review, April 14th and 15th with J.J. Gray and Mofro, Brothers of a Feather with Chris and Rich Robinson of the Black Crows, and more. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Hello there. My name is Seychelle, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is the punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. (laughs) Ta-da! Hey, I'm Juan, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is you know you're going to get chicken that's crispy, golden, and juicy. This is the gold standard of chicken sandwiches. Order the original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real customers paid for their testimonials. I wanted to know why some people who get COVID-19 get it so bad. I found out it may be because they have a high risk factor, such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, smoking, and asthma. Even if symptoms feel mild, These factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, there are things you can do, like asking your healthcare provider if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. Learn about an option at treatcovid19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment 
to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Hey, it's Brett Morton from Action Sports Jacks. Did you know you can watch our radio show? Yeah, video of a radio show. Just search ESPN 690 Jacks on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, or follow me on Twitter at Brent A.S. Jacks. Watch the show live weekdays from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. or listen on ESPN 690. All right, we continue to hang out here on Monday Morning Madness. We do this each and every Monday. We're on ESPN 690, all our different platforms, and borrowing our buddy Rich Jones's FM dial for an hour, 104.5 WOKV. You're I mean, he welcome. Doesn't know. Yeah, you, you are bet. welcome. Uh, we appreciate it, man. We had the Duel and Duval postgame show. It took people past 2 a.m. on Saturday night. Everybody was so fired up. We had calls from all over the country and the world as everybody chimed in on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brent Martin, no, that is the voice of Rich Jones and Casey Kurtz, along as always here on Morning Madness. And we've been putting Casey to work extra time as we extend Morning Madness all week long during this playoff run. We have uh, callers on the line talking about their best moments of Saturday night and other things they want to get to. Steven had called in about uh, the Burrow and Lawrence rematch. That would have been from the 2019 season. Of course, Burrow and LSU were unbelievable, and they beat Clemson in the national championship game. They whooped them pretty good, in fact, and uh, Burrow was terrific. So that's what his reference was, too. He also said a couple more moments. He mentioned on Twitter uh, Joey Bosa's blow up which yep. was huge in that football game and also the ref tackling logan cook as they blew the whistle yeah. i mean what are we doing referees the referees had a tough night that night anyway and logan cook looked like he was mad if you remember they didn't want the practice kick to go off when yep. staley called the timeout he almost tackled the punter logan cook get off logan cook he's the mvp of this football team sometimes over the years well, now you want to come around on that okay <laughs> now that they're good we can give logan cook his flowers gotcha uh, speaking of the refs did your heart sink at all i know i i just tweeted it out I, I i skipped a beat when i saw the flag on the field after the kick had gone through at the end like oh tell me that they didn't line up somehow and it was only a second and they quickly called it thank goodness but my heart skipped a beat given the way that the game was called and how electric the atmosphere was wouldn't that be the ultimate jaguars thing yeah to have that called on offense somehow some way it did stun everybody because even you could tell Doug Peterson stopped uh Al Michaels was like a flag on the play never announced the field goal was good yep. and so you're like wait a minute did they false start right because that's what you would have got I mean the only thing they really could have called on offense was a false start and ironically the irony of all of it is Asante Samuel was called for offsides and it was finally a call against number 26 on the Chargers. The Jags fans had been begging for a call against Samuel all night long. And so even if that kick didn't sneak in on the right side, they would have had a chance from now 31 yards out to win it again and probably would have got the job done. But Riley Patterson delivered. Let's get to Albert on the line here on Monday Morning Madness, presented by Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. Albert, what's happening? Not much. Um, awesome game. Flew down for the game. Great atmosphere. Uh, I think the turning moment, honestly, it was like probably the funniest moment of the night is when the halftime show was playing the best day of my life song as we were down 27 to 7. I heard that in the line waiting for popcorn. I was like, I think this is going to be the moment. And honestly, that was I was like dying laughing when that was going on. So I'm going to say that was the turning point for everyone in the stadium. That's uh, that's pretty wild. I didn't soak that in. Like, I didn't hear that from the press box, and I haven't heard anybody say that. But American Authors was playing up on the giant video boards, right? And and you're hearing that as you're going to get uh, whatever you were getting at the concession stands. And you kind of have that in your moment, like, hey, it's 27 to 7. Is this just irony that they're playing this song, or is this an omen, Albert? Like, they're going to turn this thing around. I, I don't know. I was just like, this is ridiculous. They have no sense of what's going on. I didn't even go back to my seat 
for like the rest of the game. I just like wandered the stadium and was like watching on the concourse televisions because once they started scoring, I was like, oh, I can't go back. So it was an interesting night, but uh, awesome atmosphere. Excited. Nothing bad to say. Appreciate it, Albert. Thank you, and I'm glad you didn't go home, man. Uh, and and that was the thing. Didn't you guys wonder? Okay, twenty-seven to nothing. People might. It's cold, mm. and and the seats started to be a little emptier because I think people went into the bud zone as usual or the club seats, and the club area was really like scarce. <laughs> you know, like you didn't see people, and they were just trying to stay warm. I get it. But then by the time like late third quarter or mid third quarter and some good things were happening, place was filled back up, Rich. I mean, I thought we might have more stories of, yeah, I left. And I think we do have some stories of that, but I'm not sure anybody wants to well, tell. Well, and I think <laughs> the late season games, I was with someone who was at the Cowboys game and she was there with her son who's in his early 20s, lifelong Jags fan from, you know, diapers now to where he is. And they left or were on their way out and they turned around just before uh, that went. That game went into overtime, and they went back and they they witnessed that phenomenal finish. And knowing what we know about this team in the second half performances, I hope if anyone was thinking that they would uh, leave, hopefully we're able to hightail it back. By the time it got to the end, there were empty seats. But to your point, Brent, I think people were elsewhere in the stadium. But it was as loud as it was. Right as Susan Teske and Derek Trucks performed uh, the uh, national anthem, which, by the way, we need to have her perform every playoff game and every consequential game because we're now three and O every time Susan performs the national anthem. Yeah, and she I saw that stat. And so that's awesome. Of course, Trevor Lawrence has never lost a game on Saturday. That will really be put to the test. He's never lost a game on Saturday in his (laughs) life. And it will be put to test on Saturday against Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. All right. I asked about plays and there's so many to go through and uh, say Jones, uh, the Marvin Jones. I thought the Staley challenge and the fear in there kind of was like they're going to do this charging thing. But really, if you look at the pivotal plays down the stretch, The two-point conversion, Doug Peterson, his M.O. is to be aggressive. Doug Peterson has changed this franchise. In many ways, he has, in the immediate, saved this franchise from the Urban Meyer debacle and really a tough stretch of years and over a decade. And he goes for two, Casey, in that spot because Joey Bosa moved the ball from the two-yard line to the one-yard line on an unsportsmanlike penalty and throwing his helmet. I didn't agree with Doug. I don't think. I don't think many people would have. I think getting to 27 and somehow trying to find a way to force an overtime in this game would have been happy enough for most people. Yet he made the gutsy call to do it, and it worked. And you know what else it did, Casey? It fired up 16. That's about as much emotion as we've seen out of Trevor Lawrence when he reached that ball with one hand, that long arm, over the goal line, and then he spiked the football. I think that's about as emotional as I've seen Trevor Lawrence get. Yeah, he was fired up, and I I would agree with you there when he spiked it, just the emotion on his face. And you talk about going for two there. I mean, Doug Peterson said it after. If Joey Bosa doesn't totally explode on the field, he's probably not going to go there. And so the field goal that ends up winning the game, you're tying it up at that point. But I think it just goes back to what we've talked about from the beginning of the season, actually from this point in 2022 to now in 2023, that Doug Peterson was going to have to earn their trust, and we didn't know what Trevor Lawrence had to trust. And now, a year later... We know that Doug Peterson trusts every player on his team, and they trust him fully because they go for it there in the biggest moment of pretty much all of their careers. And on the Trevor Lawrence side of it, I mean, when you got a quarterback that's that big and his arms are that long, I mean, that play should be pretty simple most of the time. But they went quick there, and I think he tried to catch the Chargers off because they ran right up to the line. And it wasn't a traditional sneak. He just kind of reached it over. So I think it's incredible that Doug Peterson, obviously, if it doesn't work, we're probably – yeah, well, we definitely have a different tune right now, but I think it's just the trust that he's gained in his players and his players have gained in him, and that can't be understated a year after nobody trusts anybody. And then there. you anticipate, guys, that that in the fourth and one on that final drive that it certainly would be a very similar sort of thing. Doug calls the timeout. Walk us through that, Brent, especially what you heard from Trevor and Doug in the locker room about the ultimate call to run ETN on that, I don't know if you call it a sweep, but using his speed while the um, while the Chargers had the, the line really um, built up at that point, but he had called the timeout before then. Is that when he ultimately made the call for that play at that moment in time? Well, yeah, I watched it again last night, by the way, and I think this was a massive play in the football game because, well, it was. We, we all know that. It's fourth and one. It was down the stretch. They were too far out of field goal range. Yeah. They needed it. I don't know why they passed on third down and one, but 
They did, and they go for it on fourth and one, and they get to the line of scrimmage, and you can hear Trevor Lawrence. Again, I watched this last night. He goes, kill, 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 which means whatever play was on, he had killed and changed it. And I think he changed it to some kind of handoff because as the play is snapped, he looks like he's about to hand off. Well, they stopped the play because Doug Peterson called timeout, didn't like what he saw. And then they go back out there. He changed the play. It was a different play. And then they give it to ETN. And ETN has this option where if they – really stop the outside he takes it inside if they stop the inside he can bounce it outside and then you saw the speed and it goes all the way down to what like the 11 12 yard line and sets up the game winning field goal so i think uh that is the moment like that's another doug moment he had this feel right he felt it right that's coaching uh but the other part of that rich was when they called timeout go back and watch the tv copy of that trevor lawrence wasn't happy Mm. he was like i had him like, I think I called the right call. Like, he was like, noticeably upset. Like, why didn't you just call time out there? We had it. So, uh, I think it was pretty – the whole sequence there shows the confidence by that time in Trevor Lawrence, the good coaching ability and feel for Doug Peterson, and then this competitive relationship between both uh, that has just been awesome to see develop this year. Let's get South Beach Gary on the line before we hit another break here on Monday. Morning Madness presented by Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. South Beach Gary, what you got here? Good morning, and Ben. All three of you said my Dolphins was just going to get absolutely blown out. Didn't happen. It was a gutsy performance by the Dolphins. I'll give them that, but your coach stinks. He stinks. What are you talking about? How about get a play call in, South Beach Gary? I mean, he cost him the football game because he couldn't get a play call in all the second half. But he did a good job getting him ready. But you got to get a play call in for the young quarterback. No, that's the young quarterback's job to get him in and out of the huddle. Nah, you can't you, do that for him, Brent. Nah, he's had problems doing that all year long. Go back and look, Mike McDaniel. Had two have played, the Dolphins would have won, bottom line. Maybe, but they made a good effort, and they lost, and it was a lot on the coaching. Third and 19, interception, shouldn't even have thrown it. Punt the ball away, your defense is playing fantastic. But, again, gutsy the, effort by the Ravens. That was bad, the but the turning point, the, the point of the game was definitely when the Chargers missed the field goal. How many times has that come back to haunt the team? Had they done that? Jacksonville wouldn't have been able to mount the comeback. You guys know that how that just absolutely deflates a team, a blown missed short field goal, but inexcusable. And not to run off. Austin Eckler had only six touches the second half. They only ran the ball seven times total in the second half. That's a blown game. Not what, not what McDaniel did. What what. Uh, with the Chargers coaching staff did. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where you were in the, in the stadium there, Brent, at the time, but I could feel the momentum shift. At least it felt like a turning point for the fans, at least, when the Chargers missed that field goal because if they were going to go down another three, I think it had that chance to be like, all right, this is it. Whether you call it fate, what you want to believe in, what's interesting about that kick is that thing was dead straight mm-hmm. and then took a left turn from 40 yards out it wasn't like it was a 50 yarder that took a left turn (laughs) all of a sudden and missed so I agree South Beach Gary that's a good point with that call with that uh, field goal miss and you did keep the momentum on your side and most people like I said they're not pulling this miracle off without a turnover in essence that was kind of like a turnover it cost them three points and it kept the momentum on the Jags side of things by the way we'll talk more about that Miami game and other games coming up a little bit later either in the show or on Brent and Friends today we'll have Maurice Jones through Rasheen Matt at this 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. But we're not done here yet. 904-362-9901. Monday Morning Madness. Take you until 10 a.m. on ESPN 690, of course, and until 9 a.m. on 104.5 WOKV. Rich Jones hangs out with us for another 15 minutes or so. We'll be right back. We've been in Jacksonville now for 15 years, and as you know and I know, we have to be ready for those hot, hot days. And this time of year, the cooler temperatures, too. Need that A.C. working and then be ready to turn on the heat for a day or two. Bold City Heating and Air has us ready. They have for years. Can't say enough about their customer service, the communication. They are prompt. They are clean. They are good. Bold City Heating and Air. And right now, take advantage of their 0% financing on all purchases and just 97 bucks for a tune-up. Be ready for the chilly weather and the heat. Bold City Heating and Air. Bold City A.C. Bonus days are back for pros at Lowe's. You earn points and save when you buy the top pro brands you trust, like DeWalt. Right now, you can save $100 on the powerful DeWalt 8 and a quarter inch carbide tipped portable table saw. Was $399, now just $299. Join today and shop bonus days. Only at Lowe's. 
Bonus points calculated before taxes and fees after applicable discounts, if any. Valid through 120. Subject to change while supplies last. Visit Lowe's.com slash MVP's bonus points for details. The Players is proud to support Canines for Warriors, which provides trained service dogs to military veterans with the goal of empowering them to return to a life of dignity and independence. It's 50 days until the players. Hi, Stan Nagel for Energy Seal Foam Insulation. If you have a metal building, it was too hot last summer, and it's going to be cold this winter. Treat yourself with foam insulation. Foam insulation really does work. Save 30% off our summer rates. Call us today, 888-306-3626, energysealtoday.com. Hey, folks. Now that the kids and grandkids have gone home and the decorations are coming down, I can see that it's time to get my carpets and sofas clean. That's where Zero Res comes in. Zero Res can clean the carpets, the sofa, the chairs, the area rugs, and even the tile and grout. Google Zero Res and see what your neighbors are saying with over 5,000 five-star customer reviews. Right now, get 20% off carpet cleaning and 20% off upholstery cleaning. Zero Res spelled forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. Fields Auto Group is a proud sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and buying or leasing a luxury car on the First Coast is easy with Fields Auto Group, Jacksonville's luxury auto group, Lexus of Jacksonville and Orange Park, Mercedes-Benz of Jacksonville Orange Park, Jaguar Land Rover Jacksonville, Porsche Jacksonville, and where my wife leases her car from Fields Cadillac Jacksonville and St. Augustine. If the luxury car you want isn't in stock, no problem. Fields Auto Group will order it and at a fair price. So stop by a Fields store today and see what world-class service really means. FieldsAuto.com. Men, if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction or PE and frustrated taking pills that don't work, Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that effectively treat your problem. 98% of patients experience immediate results during their first office visit. And for a limited time, your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Rabinsky. The physicians at Prime Men's Medical Center offer the most advanced treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Now men are lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. Guys, to eliminate your frustration in the bedroom, call Prime Men's Medical Center now to take advantage of this exclusive limited time offer. Your initial consultation and first treatment are totally free, and you'll see instant results right in the office. Call now, 904-664-8214. 904 664 8214. That's 904 664 8214. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. You can watch us on CBS 47 and Fox 30. You can listen right here on ESPN 690. And you can subscribe to our YouTube and podcast, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. Hey, we're rocking and rolling Monday Morning Madness, presented by Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. Brent Martineau, along with Casey Kurtz. We do this each and every Monday during the season, and it's a lot of fun, right? 904-362-9901. More fun when you win, and uh, the Jags have been winning. They have won six football games in a row, and we're going to keep this up with expanded coverage all week long, just like we did last week, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Rich Jones from 104.5 WOKV joining us. Now, for the next few minutes, we've been on the FM dial, 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock this morning, and I want to uh, get to more callers and thoughts and about this game, but quick peek ahead at Kansas City, because this is, to me, Belichick and Brady. Uh, For the last 20 years in the NFL, if you had to play Belichick and Brady, you're like, oof, we're going to have to do something special. Well, for people to understand, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, that's what this is, Rich Jones. The Jaguars are going to have to pull off one heck of an upset win. They are already a nine, nine and a half point underdog. And Kansas City this time of year, Kansas City at home, and Kansas City just about anywhere is really good. I can remember, though, that there have been games where the number one seed gets that first week by and they come out rusty. And the momentum that this team has built in Jacksonville and especially the wave of momentum after that second half. Yeah, again, I, I, I'm not saying that they will upset them, but it, it does at least allow for the opportunity to be there if Kansas City does happen to come off a little bit rusty from a week back. You've seen it before, Brent. Doesn't that happen from time to time where the number one seat? Like, I, if I'm an Eagles fan, I don't like that we didn't play this last week. If I'm a, if I'm a fan of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, I would rather be playing than resting for a week, even though the rest seems like it's a good thing for the players. I, I do think that there might be something there, but I'd really like to see Jacksonville come out strong. And at 
at least score on their first drive, whether they get the kickoff or not. Uh, I would like to see them come out better than what they did uh, Saturday in the atmosphere. Second throw of the game, second play of the game in interception. I mean, you just, that was such a turning point and it had that potential of upset right there. You can do the same thing to a Kansas City team that's coming out a little bit rusty after a week off potentially and maybe start to have those fans doubt themselves a little bit. Yeah, that first pass, first playoff pass from Trevor Lawrence, Aaron Rodgers also did that through yeah. an interception. And Casey, uh, the problem with what Rich said maybe is Andy Reid is brilliant off a week rest. Like, he is so good coming off bye weeks during the regular season. And Mahomes and Reid are in such a good rhythm because they've been together for so long. Uh, I understand that. I think people do like to play this time of year. I would like to keep playing this time of year. I don't want to take a week off. Uh, but in this game, you rest up, and then you have the veteran experience of handling it in the past. Uh, it's going to be a tough task. The Jags had everything, a lot of things go their way in Kansas City in the regular season meeting. Onside kick, three turnovers, but they also made too many mistakes. Dropped pass, missed field goals, and they just couldn't beat the Chiefs. They are going to need a much cleaner game, Casey, to have a chance on Saturday. Yeah, much cleaner. And, uh, you know, they've seemed to come back and beat everybody during this stretch. But, uh, you know, I don't think you want to play that game with Kansas City because Kansas City, in in the spots that the Chargers struggled, right, Herbert misses Keenan Allen, they have to take three instead of six. Mahomes is going to hit that. So you can't you can't put yourself in that situation, even though this team loves to play from behind all the way down to 27 and nothing. So, But to your point, Andy Reid and them are so good on a bye. And, again, you turned them over, what, three times in that game they played at Arrowhead earlier this season and you still lost? I mean – they are just they're I mean they're the best team in the league right now and I guess to be where you want to be you have to beat them so it should be a good football game I'm not counting Doug Peterson out I'm sure he wants to get Andy Reid back for the the loss earlier in the season because that's his boy but it's gonna be a tough one man but it's gonna be fun and I think that's the point of the story the Jags get another opportunity with everybody watching because everyone's gonna be watching Mahomes everyone wants to see it and the Jags are gonna get that opportunity to show out yet again in front of a big time audience Hey, Rich, uh, before we uh, let you get back to work and, and uh, you're playing around with us on the fun side of things. I uh, love this. Can I do this every morning? Well, I, sure I kind of like this. I mean, not that it's not fun over there either, <laughs> but, I mean, it's a different kind of fun over here on ESPN right, right. 690, Monday Morning Madness. Uh, you know, there are teams of destiny. There are magical rides. And, and, by the way, there's Cinderella stories all the time in sports and March Madness. The Jags are the Cinderella story of the NFL mm -hmm. right now. They are the darling. The Giants kind of fit this as well, but the Jags are certainly that, especially the way they won the other night. They got everybody's attention. They had people talking about them, and people want to talk about Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson as well. So those are headline guys, even more so than, say, a Daniel Jones with New York, who was terrific the other day, and he too is a nice story. So I think people want to see the Jags keep going on this ride, and sometimes you just ride the ride. And right now I think the Jags don't even know what's going on half the time, but they're like, we believe, and it's working out, and the scoreboard says we keep winning and we move on. And I think there's a little bit of – destiny with this football team right now that has again that 1996 feel that feel we didn't have in 2017 around here that team was pretty good mm. now the Jags went to Pittsburgh and won so it was a little surprising because they were able to go beat the Steelers but remember the Jags were good that year their defense was like elite kind of good this team doesn't have a pro bowler on it and here we are with a chance two wins away from going to the Super Bowl in Jacksonville uh, sometimes the sports Cinderella story carries some weight. Yeah, and you still have doubters, but uh, to uh, you mentioned Maurice Jones-Drew going into break, uh, and I'm sure you've seen the video by now, but yeah. for those who haven't on the NFL Network, at halftime, he caught, he nailed it. But there's a guy who drank the Jacksonville water, so it has its taste, its own uniqueness to it, of course, and we smelled the smell of the Maxwell House uh, roasting beans as we were tailgating, and there's something unique about Jacksonville, and unless you've kind of felt it and tasted it, and then seen the second halves that this team has been able to put together the confidence that they play with how cool that trevor lawrence is under pressure and we haven't talked about it but i didn't see and you had a chance to talk to doug peterson after the game i don't know what he answered but the fact that he stuck to a game plan even though they were down 27 nothing and 27 7 going into the second half stuck with the game plan 
I don't know many coaches that continue to do that when you're down that much and you're kind of in desperation. It just felt like this team was so much looser. They played a little looser and they play together. And there's something to be said for how the team stays together. And I'm not like discrediting what Buffalo has done and Buffalo is great, but I was watching the Buffalo Miami game yesterday and Josh Allen is isolated on the sidelines And all I kept thinking about as I saw him on the sidelines was, that's not what you see with the Jaguars. You see this team always together with each other, whether it's on the sidelines or at Waffle House afterward with a handful of other guys. This is a team that is just gelling at the right moment. And to your point, Brent, it is a, if you call it a Cinderella story, just a fun story in the league. There's always that upstart and surprise, and this is it for this team. And we just get to benefit from it because it puts our city in the national spotlight. Pretty cool. We covered sports for a long time, and I think what you find is most teams that are good have a pretty good chemistry, right? Yep. I mean, you can't have broken locker rooms or no respect for your coach or whatever and probably be good. You have to be ultra-talented for that. But there has been a different feel about this team all lo- all the whole ride, the whole season. And you can tell they're close. And Arden Key said it. He's like, these moments right now, these come are galvanizing us even more. Like, we are tighter right now than we have been all year, and we've already been really tight. So that's a good point, Rich. And I think they are really going in one direction. I'll tell you what else. The city is all pulling in one direction. Mm-hmm. The Jags have made everybody on the same page. Well, it doesn't matter how you feel about your political affiliation or, or what's going on downtown or whatever issues are in town. For this, the Jacksonville Jaguars, on Saturday night and on Saturday afternoon next week, everybody's in the same direction. We're all sitting in the same boat. And uh, it's a pretty cool feeling in Jacksonville because, hey, with this football team, there's been tension over the years. There's been frustration over the years. We haven't had many opportunities like that the last 15 seasons. And right now, the Jags have a chance to pull an upset in Kansas City in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. We've got another hour to go here on Monday Morning Madness, presented by Fields Auto Group and Bolt City Heating and Air on ESPN 690. Rich Jones, thanks for jumping in, man. Hey, thanks, man. And by the way, Brian Kilmeade coming up for our WOKV audience. If you missed it earlier, Brian was at the game on Saturday. And Brent, he was at the Jaguars-Jets game two years ago, the one that the Jaguars won. So he has seen Trevor Lawrence come full circle. And he's a Giants fan, so he got to double celebrate yesterday. He's in a great mood today for our WOKV audience. Brent, thanks. Casey, thanks as always. And 104.5 WOKV, that's where you catch Rich Jones. Good to have him stop in. Casey Kurtz, Brent Martineau, Monday Morning Madness rolls on right after this on ESPN 690. The unimaginable became our new reality. Seeing that the world is starting to pick back up from where it was left in 2019, the chip shortage will be no more and manufacturers are going to start sending more cars, skyrocketing inventory. But cars won't be flying off the lots as speedy as they were before. So how often do you really put in the time and effort to continuously make your dealership's website more reliable and credible to your potential buyers? Cox Media Group has the capability to enhance and significantly improve your website's traffic. Let us help and answer any questions you have by heading to cmg.com to find out more. The USS Orlick is a -a one-of-a-kind floating ship museum. Come visit her in downtown Jacksonville. There's a feeling in the air where people seem to care in Jacksonville. The Orlick, a gearing class destroyer with 18 battle stars, is one of the most distinguished ships of all time and the most since the end of World War II. Jacksonville is a military town and the Orlick honors all those that have served our great country. She's a great location for special occasions and meetings, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, memorial services are all spectacularly displayed on her massive deck. The Orlick is also a one of a kind location for a business meeting. Your dream event can come to life aboard this historic destroyer. To find out more, visit jacksnavalmuseum.org or call 904-789-SHIP. This is where I'm meant to be. Hello, Jacksonville. Hello, Jacksonville. I'm where I'm meant to be. Find out more about holding your next event on the Orlick. 904-789-SHIP. Recently, a new client called me and started by saying, Mr. Morgan, I really need your help, but I'm just a nobody. Those words stunned me, and I immediately called him back. And we're now helping him and his family after a terrible accident. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Everybody who comes to our firm at their time of need is a somebody. I grew up poor, but my grandmother was like a queen to us. At Morgan & Morgan, our goal is to level the playing field for you and your family at your time of need. The insurance company has unlimited money and resources. You need a firm who can fight them toe to toe. For right at 30 years, we have fought them in courtrooms throughout America. Our results speak for themselves. And always remember this, 
Everybody is a somebody, and nobody is a nobody. Visit ForThePeople.com to learn about our firm, Morgan & Morgan, For The People. Injured? Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. The holidays are behind us, and that means nothing but open road ahead. So make every mile this new year the best it can be in a new Toyota from Arlington Toyota. Camry, Corolla, RAV4, Tundra, Tacoma. Arlington Toyota's got 400 new Toyotas available and ready for wherever you want to go in 2023. Plus, every new car purchase from Arlington Toyota comes with a lifetime warranty and Arlington's 30-day exchange program. Where will your new Toyota take you in 2023? Find out and shop ArlingtonToyota.com today. Broadcasting live from the Anajar and Levine Studios. Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Shotgun for Lawrence. He's got ETN there to help him protect. He throws. It is intercepted. Asante Samuel steps in. Third pick of the opening quarter. Lawrence in the pocket, step and throw, threads the needle, it's a battle for it, and Samuel's got it! Intercepted, Asante Samuel is having a big time performance tonight. Back to throw, Lawrence looking, throws, left corner, touchdown, Marvin Jones wide open, and the Jaguars are roaring back. Lawrence in the pocket, looking for the deep shot, and he's got his man, Zay Jones, separation, touchdown, Jacksonville. Lawrence drifts back, throws, end zone, near side, hauled in, Christian Kirk, touchdown, Jacksonville. Jacksonville was down 27 to nothing, and here we go. Madison, the snapper, Cook, the holder. Patterson sweeps the leg, 36-yard attempt, it is good! The Chargers are out of the playoffs. Pandemonium at TIAA Bank Stadium. This is going to be a long flight home, a long offseason, and absolutely inexplicable. There are no words to describe what we witnessed here tonight. It's Monday Morning Madness on ESPN 690. Your chance to review, react, and respond to yesterday's Jags game. Monday Morning Madness is brought to you by the Fields Auto Group. Now, Monday Morning Madness on Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. ESPN 690. Here's Brett Martineau. Hey, thanks to Rich Jones for stopping by. Thanks to the 104.5 WOKV for having us on simulcasting the show from 8 to 9. And uh, we hang with you until 10 o'clock here on ESPN 690. Brighton Friends, 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Rasheed Mathis and Maurice Jones-Drew scheduled to join us this afternoon. And then overtime with Kurtz and Middleton, 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. On the TV side of things, I'd like to push this message out there. We will continue to do specials on a nightly basis, 7 o'clock, called Chase for the Championship. Our normal Monday show at Sneakers has actually come to a conclusion, the Jags Report live show. So, like, that show is is actually over. So uh, we will not be at Sneakers tonight. Meanwhile, the other side of things, Jaguars All Access at Strings, that show does continue. We would have done a show, win or lose, this coming Thursday with the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, on at Strings and with Josh Allen and company. So that will still be on. But just want to tell everybody, and we appreciate you coming out. We love you coming out to Sneakers and Jags Report Live. That show uh, will not be at Sneakers tonight, but we will be on at 7 o'clock on Fox 30 with a Chase for the Championship special, part of our expanded TV coverage tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday will be Jaguars All Access. Friday, live from Kansas City, we will do a one-hour special, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. That one will be on CBS 47. So as I always tell you, CBS 47, Fox 30, 
ESPN 690, Action Sports Jack's brand, social media. We've got you covered. Go find us and uh, hopefully more content that you know what to do with uh, with your Jacksonville Jaguars. And I know you're eating it up right now. You're thirsty for it. Hey, we're the same. We, we almost can't get on enough. We want to keep talking about the Jags. We want you to talk about the Jags. That's what this show is all about, 904-362-9901. We also uh, – have you in the chat on Twitter and on YouTube and the chat's been hopping all morning. So I want to at least uh, give some shout outs to the folks. I missed some of these earlier. Robert says, wow, what a weekend of football uh, set it off this Monday morning. Madness, the Dean machine, uh, Boosie reference right there uh, with a big do ball. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning to you. I'm still hung over. Albert says <laughs> drunk on a lot of fun at the very least for everybody in Jacksonville. Uh, Max says Chargers only scored seven to 10 points, if not for the turnovers and short fields. You know, the Chargers got the ball on the Jags 18 yard line, the Jags 18 yard line, the Jags six yard line. And you knew that yeah, you almost had to just chuckle when Chris, when Chris Claybrooks gets hit in the helmet with an awful punt by J.K. Scott, and they get the ball at the six-yard line. You know, I mean, that's it. Daniel says, great opening, Casey. Nice job. You got jacked up, or should I say jagged up. Uh, everybody is um, fired up in Jacksonville. Uh, Max says, it's fate. Yeah, it might be a little bit of that. Uh, doesn't it feel like something special is brewing here in Jacksonville? More replies coming up on Twitter as well. And I put this question out for you to think about or jump in, 904-362-9901. We're talking about Trevor a lot. We should. Uh, we're talking about Doug a lot. We should. This was massive for both of those men. But there were a lot of big-time players in that football game. And do you have somebody that's a little bit under the radar right now that we're not talking about enough? I've got a couple of options. Casey will have some. But what do you think? Shine some love in the direction of a Jacksonville Jaguar player that you thought was big in that football game and might not be getting it. That's on the way in a moment. Let's get to Clint on the line right now. Clint, good morning on Monday Morning Madness. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Good. Uh, yeah, I just want to point out that, you know, I don't know if anybody else really looked at it this way, but to me, the turning point in the Titans game was the pass on the deep corner to the end zone with Christian Kirk. That was really, that was the one touchdown pass that Trevor had, and it yes. kind of really changed the game, right? Um, and, and I know the Jags were kind of coming back. It was about 30 to 14, but that play to, uh, to, to Jones on that 40 yards, that touchdown, to me, it looked like the exact same play, just with Jones lined up instead of Kirk. And to me, you know, I know that you're, you know, looking for, you know, unnamed people that, that weren't, you know, that, that weren't mentioned yet, but that shows the confidence between Trevor and Duck. You know, it, it's, it's almost like he, he, it's almost like he drew that play up for someone like Trevor for him to sling it, and, and they've been wide open both times. It changes the face of the game both times. He needs to rough. Yeah, Clint, good call, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for bringing that up because I love the hidden stuff in the football game, all right? And I'm going to give you two instances, uh, and, and one of them is going to be what Clint's talking about. So I'm gonna, I'll start there. The, what Clint was saying on that throw to Zay Jones, if you listen to the TV copy, Tony Dungy points out that they have, like, these winner routes. That's what he called them, like, these, these routes that they can get to. It sounds like Trevor changed into that route and saw something. And then they beat him. But I want to go back and look at it, if you can. And I'm going to give you two instances I think you should go back and watch in this football game. This is one. They are hustling to the line. They're moving quick. Like Doug Peterson said, they changed to up-tempo. And this was one of those times that they were up-tempo. And what they did is they would put, like, the, the uh, Ingram, Zay Jones, uh, Kirk, or Kirk, Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, out split to the left. You know that little bunch set that they do on the left? Then the next play, they moved it to the right. Then they moved it to the left. Then they moved it to the right. But they're doing this in hurry-up fashion, and they're putting a the guy in motion, and the Chargers are confused. Like, the Chargers are now like, what, what's going on? And if you go book, look at that play, either Trevor sees something, they changed something, or it was originally called, but the Chargers are all kind of messed up. And that's they created with the up-tempo the shifting from left side of the, the formation to the right side of the formation, in my opinion. Uh, and I don't talk X's and O's like this from a football standpoint very often. I just think this is what I saw in that sequence that allowed them to, to have a lapse, to not know what they were doing. And they took advantage of it by keep going and going. And sometimes you wonder why they go up-tempo in spots, and that's why. Can you catch the team napping, sleeping, out of alignment? And I think they did. And that's why... Zay Jones was wide open. So I don't know if it was specifically that play because if you go back to look at the Titans play, you know, Manhurts was lined up on the right side. They needed a lot of time for that play to develop. 
uh, and the protection had to be good. And while the protection had to be good and this one developed, I don't know if it had to develop as long as the Kirk play against Tennessee, uh, but I have to go back and look at it even a little bit closer. So uh, I get your point, Clint. I think it's an excellent point, and I think the sequence going up to it was really good. I'm going to give you one other thing to look at, and this will show you where Doug Peterson's really good. This could have been a monumental mistake in the football game. When they have the delay a game at the one-yard line, Remember that? Before the Marvin Jones touchdown, mm-hmm. Jaguars are down at the one, and, and uh, Trevor has this uh, the headset issue. Like, he actually comes almost all the way over to the si- sideline and because he doesn't know how to get the call or what the call, and then, boom, they get lined up, and they don't get the snap off, and they go, delay a game? Like, are you kidding me? Did that just happen? Well, third down and six, boom, next play, Marvin Jones. Like, they didn't blink. They didn't flinch. And – I thought right after the delay of game, they take a shot on the TV copy of Doug Peterson, and he holds his hand up like, it's all right. It's all right. Like, just calm, this calm, holding my hand up. You know when, like, somebody's like, all right, calm down. Settle down. Shut up, Brent. Like, stop Oh, yeah, shut up, Brent, I'm familiar with. You know, put your hand up. Like, that's what Doug did. Doug was just with the glasses on, the professor look, the card in his hand that looks like the Waffle House menu, and then he just put his hands up. It's like, it's cool. I know that was like a terrible penalty, but it's fine. Let's go make a play. And they did. And, and at the confidence of Peterson, the calmness of Peterson there, I thought that was a cool moment to, to kind of capsulate the year of, of what the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, are all about, what Doug Peterson's all about, and how he's helped this football team overcome some things. All right, how about some star players? I think we're getting a bunch in the chat. I know I have a bunch on Twitter. Ingram and uh, Roy Robertson Harris. Uh, someone says, let's see, who was that? I want to give him a shout out. Uh, uh, P Mac Jag. Um, let's see what else. What else? I know I saw another one in here. Roy Robertson Harris from Meta World Crazy. Uh, we've got some in the chat. I think, uh, Mike Caldwell, uh, was, is a name mentioned, you know, and Caldwell who took a lot of heat now is getting a lot of love and, and he should Agnew, another one. Agnew helps the end of the first half touchdown with a big kick return he sparked another one they had a short field great call Mac Cooper uh Dean Machine says Marvin Jones Zay Jones Christian Kirk Evan Ingram all caught touchdowns uh on that uh, comeback yes they did they spread the ball around and so I think I really thought Kirk was unbelievable in the second half Casey I also thought Ingram was unbelievable in the second half and I'm going to give you the guy that I don't think people are talking about here tonight uh or or today or Saturday night or Sunday enough that's Travis Etienne. Etienne ran hard. Yep. Like he ran he made two yard gains into six yard gains. He he had four yard gains into eight yard gains. He had minus one yard losses into three yard gains. And then he has the big play on fourth and one. He goes over a hundred yards. But I thought Etienne, even in his small yardage stuff, I thought he was pivotal. And I do think the Jags even could have run the football more in the first half. But at the end of the day, I think ETN played a huge role in this game, and they didn't abandon the run in the second half. They kept using ETN even when they were down. You know, in a comeback, they still had a 14-play drive, Casey. I mean, they were up 27 nothing. You'd think they'd have to be quick strike, and they still had a 14-play drive, and a big part of that was Travis Etienne and keeping the balance going and getting the ball in number one's hands. I thought he was huge, and there's a long list of guys, but I thought Etienne had a lot of hidden, tough yards in that game. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was really good as well, and I, I think he needed it, right, a bounce back from – whatever happened against the Titans and really a second half of the season that was not as good as the first half. He had the long touchdown against Houston that people remember, but yeah, I think it was a big performance for this guy, by the way, on your, um, on your question, somebody put in the chat, Jalen Ramsey, because that's how we got Travis Etienne. Like, that's a fair point. <laughs> also a lot of love for Riley Patterson as well. Not only the game winning field goal, but got to hit all those extra points, man. And we take them for granted when they happen and when they don't, you know, you crucify somebody for it. So Riley Patterson did step up big for the Jags. Um, the guys that I have for your question that you asked and that aren't getting enough love, I think we all agree Roy Robertson Harris played incredible the other night. Uh, I mean, he was great. He was in the backfield. He was taking on double teams and still getting to the quarterback, still getting to Austin Eckler when they ran the ball those like four times. So I thought Roy Robertson Harris was great. Marvin Jones stepping up in the moment. I know everybody scored for the Jags, it felt like, but you were still down in that game. Marvin Jones makes you a play, scores a touchdown, and I'm happy for him. And then the play that kind of gets forgotten – Andre Cisco knocks the ball away in the oh, end zone. Big play. Yeah. I, now, I, I cut that highlight yesterday. Yeah. That was a huge play. Exactly. So, I mean, that's one that you could forget about. Probably should have been picked off on the other side or uh, after it was knocked away. But, I mean, to make that play, to make that recovery, 
again, these are the plays that if these plays don't get made, they do not win. Like, they needed every second and every point to win the game. If Herbert hits Keenan Allen, if Andre Sisco doesn't knock that ball down, I mean, there's no chance for a comeback. So that's a play that is going to go under the radar, but a massive play in the game for Andre Sisco. That's a great call. Uh, I want to go back to ETN for another moment just because I also, you know, they did a lot of these swing passes, Casey, like behind the line of scrimmage, like there were laterals. They were actually laterals or they were just over the line of scrimmage. You know, those ones that you're running in, and Trevor has to put good ball placement on it. And I think those plays go under the radar. I don't think that's an easy play at all. And I don't think it's an easy catch. And if Travis ETN loses his focus one time, it could be a fumble. Or, or you lose three, four, five yards on the play. So I thought ETN and just even like these little moments where he was really big, and then he was big in the biggest of moments, the fourth and one play. And I think somebody mentioned uh, something about that run. I thought the Chargers, in hindsight, you look back, should have let them score on that run on fourth and one because they could have had the ball back with 120 to go. Yep. And it's we only had one timeout. Now that's tough to do in situational football. Like you're not thinking like that if you're the defender. But – if you fast forward it, they had no chance to stop the clock because they only had one timeout, and they would have got the ball back with 120 to go. And would Travis Etienne have like taken a knee? I doubt it. I think he would have gone right into the end zone. So Herbert would have had an opportunity with one timeout and about a buck 20 to go. Uh, so in hindsight, I I think they wish they did that. But that was a heck of a run, a heck of a bounce, a heck of a play, a heck of a call. And I think all these other hidden things inside of it. Riley Patterson getting mentions. Caldwell, as you mentioned, ETN. Juwan Mike, Taylor. Uh, Juwan Taylor. Love, as he should. I got a Walker Little one on here, too. And, and good call. Walker Little. How good was Walker Little? <laughs> good. I mean, I, I saw we had comments in our postgame show after the game that, you know, hey, might have paid Cam Robinson, but Walker Little's looking pretty legit. And you got Jawan Taylor on the other side who's single-handedly making Joey Bosa break his helmet in two different spots. So the tackles played incredible, both sides. Yeah, uh, Taylor, <laughs> he probably got away with some holds. Like, I know a lot of people thought the refs were bad, and I think everybody around the nation thought the refs were bad and kind of screwed the, the Jags at times. But if you really look at some of these calls, Bosa was so mad, and I think because of the, the holds on Taylor, and he probably got away with a couple at the least. But I thought Walker Little was really good, and I know people are talking about, like, the Cam Robinson side of things. This isn't a Cam Robinson thing. The Jack, Cam Robinson's the left tackle. This is Walker Little might now be cementing his role as the right tackle of the football team, which allows Jawan Taylor to maybe walk in the offseason. You to trust uh, Walker Little to do that job, and then you put some of that money into guys like Evan Ingram and maybe even Narden Key. Like, watch the domino effect of that potentially with the way Walker Little has stepped up and he has played. Roy Robertson Harris, you know he had one of like the best games in the history of the sport <laughs> from that position with the pass breakups, the tackles for loss, the sack, like the numbers. I think only five other guys in the history of the game put up the numbers that Roy Robertson Harris did in that game. Yeah, and, I, I didn't know it was one of the greatest games of all time, but I mean, he was he was incredible. I mean, I, I've questioned before, like, you know, why did they, they sign him? It's not a huge deal, but why did they pay this guy? And last season I, I was questioning that and even parts of this season, but he was incredible on Saturday night. I mean, multiple plays stick out in my head where my man is getting double teamed and he just throws one of his big arms out and grabs the running back and then he's waiting for somebody else to come finish off the tackle. But, I mean, he was breaking double teams. He was knocking passes down, to your point. And I'm not surprised that it was an all-world, all-time performance because he was everywhere for the Jags. He was incredible. All right, I'm going to give you a chance to guess this. The guy that I've been calling on that I've been probably disappointed in this season that had to come up and play big. I already know the answer. Who is it? Fadakasi. He was terrific. Foley Fadakasi was big in this football game for the Jags. Foley Fadakasi and Roy Robertson Harris, who I didn't think that the interior had played well for the first dozen weeks of this season. They've really turned it on in December with different guys. But Fadakasi hadn't been really one of those guys. And Fadakasi steps up and makes some huge plays. Obviously, the sack that gets negated by the Trayvon Walker play. Uh, but he made more plays than that. 94 was involved. And I'm going to tell you something else. The 30-for-30 the 30 30 on this game, as you go back and look at it, Fadakasi and Roy Robertson Harris get credit in the locker room at halftime for getting up in front of that group of men and saying, we're going to still win this game. Those were the guys leading the charge. It wasn't Doug Peterson. It wasn't Trevor Lawrence. It wasn't Arden Key. It was Roy Robertson, Harrison, Foley, Fadakasi. And Fadakasi, he was on a mission. 
on Saturday night here at Jacksonville. And I thought he had to play well sooner or later. You need guys to step up. And he's been probably one of the only disappointing players, if you look at the season in totality, one of the only free agent signings that hasn't really flashed. And then he flashes in the big-time moments. And for me, that's worth it. That's worth the $10 million a year, yep. whatever it costs. Because when you can come up big on the big stage and make a difference, then you, you earned it. And that's what you brought here to do. It's not, it's not for a game in early September. It's for a game in mid-January that you're built this team and spent the money to come up big. And that's where these guys are coming up big. And as we hit the YouTube feed and the Twitter feed and ask the question, all right, give us an under-the-radar guy, well, you can start going all across the board. Look how many people we just mentioned. We mentioned ETN. We mentioned Jawan Taylor. We mentioned Walker Little. We mentioned Evan Ingram. We mentioned Christian Kirk. We mentioned Marvin Jones. Uh, who else? We mentioned Roy Robertson Harris. Mentioned Fadakasi. Mentioned Cisco. I mean, it's amazing. Truly. The Dean Machine says, Brent having some mic issues, or is that you? Uh, or is that me? Meaning the Dean Machine. I think uh, it's you, Dean Machine, because I think I'm fine. Unless I'm having mic issues, Casey. No, you're fine. Yeah. I sound fantastic, Dean Machine. Don't do that. I mean, fantastic. Mid, but, you know, oh. you sound fine. Like, like the mic is fine. It's just you is the uh, Oh, that's the problem. All right. Yeah, uh, for the use. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so much to talk about this game. Joey Bosa, what a mental collapse. I, yeah. it, he cost him the football game. And the whole deal with, with uh, Joey Bosa is odd, isn't it? Like, he was on the sideline most of the time. I know he's coming off injury. How much of that had to do with the injury? How much of that had to do with discipline from Staley? I mean, I think early in the game there was some discipline, and then they put him back out there, and he does that, man. I don't I don't get it. I, I, I understand you frustrated. It, he got held on the play. Go back and watch it. Okay, great. But, like, <laughs> you get held sometimes. Like, that's how the sport works. And to react like that, I mean – he he put Doug Peterson in the position to go for two there. I don't – and he lines up off sides earlier in the game. Man, I don't get it. That guy's supposed to be a leader. That guy's supposed to be great. I, it's kind of hard to believe that that's the guy that did that for you. If it's a young player, okay. Like, I mean, we'll talk about the Trayvon Walker play. And, I mean, that's a young player. It's a bad – you're caught in a bad situation there. Joey Bosa is a veteran who caused it on himself, throwing his helmet on the ground and doing all of that. So, if I'm Brandon Staley – First of all, if you keep your job, but then, I mean, you got to have some serious conversations because although it was a team effort to blow a 27-point lead, at the end of the game, Joey Bosa was a big reason why they lost. <laughs> hey, they're getting mad at me for my uh, Wi-Fi, so I guess this is getting a little scratchy in here. Let's take a break yeah, anyway. It's time to do it. that. Uh, so let's take a break. Monday Morning Madness presented by Fields Auto Group, Old City Heating and Air. We'll, uh, we'll reboot the system here at home. Somebody's messing around with my Wi-Fi here, I guess, uh, at the home. We, we never have these kind of issues. Got to pay the bill. Yeah, you are just you would go to break. We'll be back. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Mostly sunny with daytime highs in the mid to upper 60s on this Monday holiday. The clouds will increase a little bit this evening and tonight. And it'll be cool tonight, but not as cold as it's been. Overnight lows will be in the upper 30s and low 40s. Have a great Monday. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sima. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. Before you buy a diamond anywhere, shop Beards Diamonds. Forever Vets Pet Resort at Durban is officially open. Whether you're looking to board your pet during a vacation or looking for a place to them to play during the day, look no further. Forever Vets Pet Resort has officially opened its doors with roomy, climate-controlled indoor play areas for big and small dogs, shaded outdoor play areas with a splash zone, and private cat condos including access to a cat tree filled oasis your pet will feel right at home forever vets pet resort will provide a comfortable place for your pets while you're away and ensure your four-legged friend is safe and happy during their stay take advantage of a free day of play to all new clients and if you purchase one night of boarding you'll receive half off your next night want to learn more give us a call or go to forevervets.com you can also stop by for a free facility tour we're open seven days a week with extended hours for your convenience for Forever Vets Pet Resort at Durban is now open for reservations. 
Fields Auto Group is a proud sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and buying or leasing a luxury car on the First Coast is easy with Fields Auto Group, Jacksonville's luxury auto group, Lexus of Jacksonville and Orange Park, Mercedes-Benz of Jacksonville Orange Park, Jaguar Land Rover Jacksonville, Porsche Jacksonville, and where my wife leases her car from Fields Cadillac Jacksonville in St. Augustine. If the luxury car you want isn't in stock, no problem. Fields Auto Group will order it and at a fair price. So stop by a Fields store today and see what world-class service really means. FieldsAuto.com. There are many issues small business owners face when it comes to operating a company. The need to have reliable suppliers is imperative and has become one of today's key concerns. Supply chain bottlenecks can be disruptive and costly. Where can you find the resources to address these issues? SCORE offers free confidential mentoring as well as workshops, webinars, and online information. Let us help you navigate and find solutions to difficult business situations. See how SCORE can save you time, money, and headaches by visiting our website at jacksonville.score.org. Ready to hit the open road and see America? Island Oaks, located just west of Jacksonville, Florida, is the perfect place to set up camp. With lakeside lots, swimming, fishing, dining, ball courts, live music, events, and new activities daily, there's something for everyone here. Call or text 904-906-6779 or visit islandoaksrv.info for weekly specials. Come solo for lasting memories or bring the family and friends for a fun-filled vacation. No RV? No problem. Island Oaks now offers lots equipped with ready-to-stay RVs in a variety of sizes to fit your vacation needs. No matter what you choose, you're sure to have a great time at Island Oaks RV Resort. Book your stay today. Call or text 904-906-6779 or visit islandoaksrv.info for weekly specials. This is Sam and he changed my life. If you're a veteran or know a veteran struggling with post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury, please go to AmericanHumane.org to learn about the Pups for Patriots service dog program. A message from American Humane. The USS Orlick is a one-of-a-kind floating ship museum. Come visit her in downtown Jacksonville. There's a feeling in the air where people seem to care in Jacksonville. The Orlick, a gearing class destroyer with 18 battle stars, is one of the most distinguished ships of all time and the most since the end of World War II. Jacksonville is a military town and the Orlick honors all those that have served our great country. She's a great location for special occasions and meetings, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, memorial services are all spectacularly displayed on her massive deck. The Orlick is also a one of a kind location for a business meeting. Your dream event can come to life aboard this historic destroyer. To find out more, visit jacksnavalmuseum.org or call 904-789-SHIP. This is where I'm meant to be. Hello, Jacksonville. Hello, Jacksonville. I'm where I'm meant to be. Find out more about holding your next event on the Orlick. 904-789-SHIP. As a Walgreens pharmacist, I talk with people all the time about little tips and tricks for filling their Medicare prescriptions, like taking advantage of Walgreens 90-day refills to save them a trip, or using refill by scan, which is super easy and right on your phone. And for anybody worried about prescription costs, I say, hey, we got you, with low-cost copays on many medications. Let's talk about making things easier. Walgreens is here. Fill your way and save at walgreens.com slash Medicare. See pharmacists for restrictions and exclusions. My heart was racing just making spaghetti. I could have waited to tell my doctor, but I didn't wait. I was short of breath just reading a book. I could have delayed telling my doctor, but I didn't wait. They told their doctors and found out they have atrial fibrillation, a condition which makes it about five times more likely to have a stroke. If you have one or more of these symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, or lightheadedness, this is no time to wait. Contact your doctor. Brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Could your business service more customers if you could just find the right staff? At CMG, we have a large database of people who have specifically opted in in the last 14 days to receive more information about job opportunities. Through our omni-channel approach, we can launch a complete marketing approach across email, social media, and video to market to these people. And with a message about why they should come work for you. Let us do the work for you to find the talent you need. Head to cmg.com to find out more, and we will get back to you with the next steps. 
Have you made your 2023 memory screening appointment? Annual memory screening should be part of everyone's health and wellness routine, even if you're not currently experiencing memory problems. The Alzheimer's Foundation of America offers free memory screenings every weekday with no minimum age or insurance prerequisites. Learn more about memory screenings and schedule your free appointment by contacting the Alzheimer's Foundation of America at 866-232-8484 or visit alzfdn.org. Start your new year in a like-new car from the pre-owned experts at Arlington Toyota. Arlington Pre-Owned has over 300 used available. All makes, all models, some even same model year. You gotta see it. And when it comes to buying with confidence, just leave it to my friends at Arlington. Their 30-day exchange program comes with your purchase. That's 30 days to love your pre-owned purchase or exchange it. Add some major excitement to your new year and an amazing new ride from Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned. In person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online anytime at Arlington Toyota. Um, hello, it's me, the designer jeans in your closet, the back of your closet. What am I doing here? Would you keep caviar in the back of your fridge with the ketchup and old milk? Yeah, I don't think so. So what happened to us? I mean, have you seen my label? I used to summer in the Hamptons and now I'm stuck behind a pair of sweats. Sure, I never really fit you quite right, and one of my pockets is so small you can't even squeeze your hand into it. But it's all about the look, and I look good. I need to get back out on the scene so I can be seen. You know, going to fancy parties, getting expensive iced coffees, Sunday fun days, okay? So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create new jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Hey, everybody, it's Brett Martineau from Action Sports Shacks. There's a good chance you have a smart speaker, so use it with the SPN 690. Stay up to date on the Jags and all things sports by telling Alexa or Google to play ESPN 690. It's as easy as that. Make sure you listen weekdays, 3 until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. All right, we made it back. Uh, Appreciate you hanging in with us. I don't know what the heck happened. we got aliens, ghosts. They're trying to knock us off. Maybe it's Kansas City. They're messing with us already here on a week uh, going into this divisional playoff round. Brent Martin along with Casey Kurtz. Monday Morning Matters presented by Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. And uh, talk about this big Jags win over the L.A. Chargers on Saturday night. And now you get another game on this Saturday, 4.30. That game will be on NBC. I think you get the uh, prime time crew, by the way. Uh, that will be Tariko and Chris Collinsworth. It's the only game they have this week. Uh, I don't think uh, the old Al Michaels crew and Tony Dungy was the most entertaining of listens uh, this past weekend. Yeah, didn't get uh, rave reviews, but, you know, can't win them all, I guess. Yeah, the, the thing about it, like, I went and listened back again. You know, I love Al Michaels. I think everybody, a lot of people love Al Michaels, but it just was – it, it was like, was where's the passion? Like, where's the energy? This is like an epic comeback. This is historic, and you didn't feel it. And this is the guy that's covered so many historical events. And Dungey's not going to be like an over-the-top, crazy energy analyst guy. That comes, you kind of know that. Uh, but it was a little surprising. Uh, and, you know, we saw last night, uh, Al Michaels never called the kick good. He just said there was a flag on the play. A flag on the play. Oh. Never, never said it was good. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll get to Rico and Collinsworth this week. Uh, and the Jags play at 430 to kick off Divisional Weekend. It was a terrific playoff weekend. I mean, I give a ton of credit to the Ravens. I give a ton of credit to the Dolphins for uh, what they were able to do in, in, with uh, tough quarterback situations in that game. Uh, let's get to the phones again. Daniel is on, and uh, thanks for hanging out with us on a Monday Morning Madness. Daniel, what's happening? Oh, good morning, guys. Hey, I just got to give credit to your uh, your crew for the uh, after game show because for y'all to put this together this quick and for everybody to come together, that was it was really really top notch. So great Appreciate job. It. And uh, and there were a lot of people in the chats that were loving your questions during the interviews too. By the way, Brent. Oh, well, that's nice. There you go. You're my interview guy now. You're the critique. I gotta you gotta let me know if we're doing all right. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I. Don't miss a single one, I don't think. But it, um, my my um, my perspective on the change of the of the game was actually the defense. I mean, don't get me wrong; all the other ones, you know, um, really, you know, made you think, okay, this can happen. But just the the fact that the defense 
even with all those turnovers, there could have been more points. But for them to stop them for those field for those couple field goals that they did, and then to just sh- basically shut them down in the second half, that was fantastic. But then the moment that I thought that it was going to happen was that when he called that replay. Because you watch the Jags run up to the line, like you know, just like what the San Diego had done when their guy actually did trap the ball, you know, and I, I think that influenced him to go ahead and throw that flag. But once they got to the line, they didn't call the play right away, you know. They actually waited a, a few seconds, and it took like normal timing. And so, you know, I just didn't know if that helped induce, but uh, but yeah, it, it was. It, and I love the fact that y'all were there for me on Saturday night because. When we were at 27 nothing, my wife fell asleep and rolled over and put, had her hand on my leg. So I couldn't even go to a different room and watch the game. And so I had to watch this comeback in near silence. I, was, I, was, I felt like I was tweaking like a meth head, trying to, to, you know, to be able to uh, share my excitement. But y'all were there for me. I got to call in, talk with Aaron and Brian. And so... Thank you all very much for that, you know. But you all have a great day. I'll uh, listen to you at 3. Appreciate it, Daniel. Thanks for hanging with us, too, of course, uh, on all this expanded coverage. This is new stuff, new territory, and we're just throwing these shows on and and, uh, trying to add and and give you more content. And so we appreciate uh, you guys jumping in, too, and uh, everybody associated with it, including Fields Auto Group and Bold City Heating and Air. And uh, that's Saturday night, the last two Saturdays, we've had this postgame show, and it was a lot of fun on Saturday. And the guys did a great job with uh, Brian Middleton and uh, Justin Cousart stopping in, along with Aaron Schachter Schachter leading the way, and uh, Casey down at the stadium and myself at the stadium. So it was a lot of fun. We had some good calls. We hung on there longer to what about 2:20 in the morning, I think it was, uh, that we said goodbye on uh, on Saturday, and probably do it again this coming Saturday, different time. It won't be as late. We will not be going till 2 a.m. <laughs> this well, if we are, what, something has gone terribly, terribly right. By we the way. might. Yeah, I was gonna say we might be going till uh, you go a little closer to that Super Bowl now. Those those post game shows get a little longer and longer and longer. <laughs> so uh, it's just a lot of fun in Jacksonville right now uh, to uh, to watch this thing unfold and where they are. I said this, Casey, a couple weeks back. When the Jags keep winning, they speed up like their development by a year. La- the t- went over the Titans. What that did is it advanced this whole thing by a year, in my opinion. And so I don't know if this was like a year advancement. I just think this was more advancement to be able to win a playoff game. What this does for Doug, what this really does for Trevor to have on his record right now is 1-0 and in the postseason, even after that bad start. So to build some equity, and if he could somehow find a way to now beat Patrick Mahomes, and you beat Herbert and Mahomes, I mean, wow, what would that do for the stock of Trevor Lawrence, the equity of Trevor Lawrence, the I've arrived Trevor Lawrence, you got to mess with me for the next 10 years in Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence. This could be a significant game if they're able to win it. And by the way, it really feels like it's all house money on the Jag side right now. It's definitely house money, and we can get into that. But I think when you're talking about Herbert and Mahomes, he's already passed Herbert because you beat him. And by the way, Justin Herbert did not play that great. Like, they were up 27 nothing, but they got short field after short field after short field. So I, I don't really put anything on, on Justin Herbert. I don't think he played well. I don't think he, he missed some throws that would have – won the game even though they tried to to give it up and eventually did give it up. So I think he's passed up Justin Herbert by a long shot. But when you look at Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> it's going to take a little more than a win to get in front of him. But very few beat Patrick Mahomes in these situations. Joe Burrow's done it. Tom Brady's done it. Not a lot have done it. And you look at not only Patrick Mahomes, but Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey and the dynasty that they've built there. They've jumped a year in the progression this year. There's no doubt about it. I believe that. But if they do this, you're going to look at this team like Cincinnati because in the beginning of the season, Cincinnati, they lost a couple of games, and it was like, oh, okay, they'll be there. It's fine. And that's how you're going to react to the Jags because if they can go on one of those runs and you look at what they have and you look at what the Jags have, you're like, you know what? These teams really are similar. The people that were talking about it before the season, maybe they knew what they were talking about because those two teams are similar. They're led by the quarterback who's generational. And then you might have an opportunity to play that team if you can beat Kansas City. But the progression of beating Kansas City in the postseason would do so much for this team. You already have free agents that want to play here. Your guys are going to want to stay here. Doug Peterson, 
uh, they can't give him the coach of the year because that's already done and voted on. But he's the coach of the year no matter what happens there. So you can jump many years in development if you can somehow go into Arrowhead, not beat him at home, go into Arrowhead and beat them on the road. It'd be something. Yeah, it would. Uh, uh, we're going to talk all about it, but it's going to be – that would be massive. We know what that would do. That would elevate the different stratosphere. And I already think Trevor Lawrence just elevated himself. I mean, what people would have been saying today, what we would have been saying all day yesterday about Trevor Lawrence, uh, think about that conversation. And think about the conversation we're having instead. Uh, it was an amazing performance to be able to do that and to be able to turn that that narrative, those conversations, into what we have here in Jacksonville this morning and now another opportunity. And keep this in mind. And we didn't even mention this a lot in the show, but I know, like, everybody knows this. The fact that they did turn it over five times and won the game, and they lost the turnover battle negative five and won the game, it just doesn't happen. It's, like, ridiculous the percentages of not happening, right? First one to ever do it in the playoffs. And I think Derwin James was even like, we forced five turnovers and lost. Yeah. Arden Key was like, we were negative five in the turnovers and we won. <laughs> I mean, it was still just, hard to believe. I get just, you. It was, I mean, they, people know what turnovers mean to this sport, right? To these games, and it's magnified in the postseason. But what we haven't seen out of Trevor in this offense recently is clean play. Trevor now has turned it over in five consecutive games, I believe the number is, and now the turnovers for Trevor alone are nine in his last five games because of the amount of turnovers he just had the other night. So if he plays a clean game, this offense feels like it can do a lot of things. But they need to get clean. Like, they can't do what they've been doing. They've been down so much so early, but they can't do that in this football game uh, coming up uh, against Kansas City on Saturday. So I think we all know that. I think they know that. Uh, but – the bottom line is the Jacksonville Jaguars survive and advance somehow and do it in historic fashion. Meanwhile, real quick, did you see a lot of the support for Brandon Staley out of the locker room of the Chargers? I was maybe a bit surprised by that. Yeah, they capping. You know, uh, I was surprised to see it as well. I I don't get it, Brent. Support him. I hear you. It's a good look. It was 27 to nothing, and you're a defensive coach, and you had first five turnovers. I mean, nothing else needs to be said. And by the way, your quarterback, who I just said it, he didn't play well. So if I'm the Chargers ownership, that's all I need. You're a defensive coach. You can't hold on to a 30-point lead, and the quarterback's not getting better. Goodbye. But don't think it's going to happen because I think it would have happened by now. Well, and the Chargers are cheap, you know. And, or did they just not know if they can get Peyton, Sean Payton, meaning? Um, are they going to go all in like that? Yeah, probably not, right? Uh, Matt Master says, uh, right about that missed field goal, that's the turnover we really needed. And Cody says, doesn't that count as a turnover? No, it really doesn't. But um, it, it was close enough. It took points off the board. We can't right. count it, guys. It's fine. Hey, you got a chance to get back in. 904-362-9901 before we hit the top of the hour. Remember, 3 o'clock until 6. Brenton Friends, Rasheed Mathis, Maurice Jones-Drew. Overtime with Kurtz and Middleton later today as well. And then we'll take you a chase for the championship. 7 o'clock on Fox 30 on the TV side. But let's uh, put a bow on this one on a Monday morning. Jacksonville still alive in the postseason. We'll be right back. In case you were wondering, Rasheen Mathis, big Trevor Lawrence guy. He rode out to his left and made a play to Agnew, I yes, believe. Yes, that's the play. On the sideline, I was like, like that's Mahomes, that's Lamar, that's Josh Allen. It, it's not too many quarterbacks that's going to make that throw. You know, even scramble like that, by find his way out of the pocket with poise and make that type of throw. Like, that's, that's big time football. Hear more from Rasheen every Monday at 4 p.m., only on ESPN 690. Smoked for hours, served in minutes. Now that sounds like good barbecue. And it is at Willie Jewels in St. Augustine at Mirabella Crossing. Fast casual dining served up old school barbecue style with a heaping side of Southern hospitality. Need catering? They do it. Third party delivery? They have it. Need a job? They have openings. Visit WillieJewels.com. Kids eat free on Wednesdays. Best jumbo wings in town and TVs for football season. Visit Willie Jewels at Mirabella Crossing in St. Augustine. Old school barbecue. Smoked for hours, served in minutes at Willie Jewels. American Window Products offers 
free low E coating on select windows at an affordable price that can help reduce your energy usage with 24 months zero interest financing. Visit AmericanWindowProducts.com for a free estimate. American Window Products, the window professionals. Hey guys, this is Kenan Thompson. I have a problem with you. Yes, you. None of y'all told me that Auto Trader has millions of new and used cars that I can shop from home. I thought we were friends. I put smiles on your face, but I'm not smiling. No one told me that with Auto Trader, a dealer can deliver cars to my home or that I could shop by price on Auto Trader. No one. Consider this friendship that you just learned we had officially over. Finally, it's easy. Auto Trader. Hi, Stan Nagel for Energy Seal Foam Insulation. If you have a metal building, it was too hot last summer, it's going to be cold this winter. Treat yourself with foam insulation. Foam insulation really does work. Save 30% off our summer rates. Call us today, 888-306-3626, energysealtoday.com. For survivors of domestic violence in Duval and Baker counties, Hubbard House provides free, confidential emergency shelter and services. Call our 24-hour hotline at 904-354-3114. Hey folks, now that the kids and grandkids have gone home and the decorations are coming down, I can see that it's time to get my carpets and sofas clean. That's where Zero Res comes in. Zero Res can clean the carpets, the sofa, the chairs, the area rugs, and even the tile and grout. Google Zero Res and see what your neighbors are saying with over 5,000 five-star customer reviews. Right now, get 20% off carpet cleaning and 20% off upholstery cleaning. Zero Res spelled forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. We've been in Jacksonville now for 15 years, and as you know and I know, we have to be ready for those hot, hot days. And this time of year, the cooler temperatures, too. Need that A.C. working and then be ready to turn on the heat for a day or two. Bold City Heating and Air has us ready. They have for years. Can't say enough about their customer service, the communication. They are prompt. They are clean. They are good. Bold City Heating and Air. And right now, take advantage of their 0% financing on all purchases and just 97 bucks for a tune-up. Be ready for the chilly weather and the heat. Bold City Heating and Air. Bold City A.C. .com. Listen to ESPN 690 anytime, anywhere, on any device. Whether you're at home or on the go, get the latest on the Jags, FSU, the Jumbo Shrimp, and Action Sports Jacks on odyssey.com. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y.com or on ESPN 690.com. Hey, welcome back to Monday Morning Madness. Brent Morton along with Casey Kurtz. It was good to have Rich Jones join us in the first hour. We were on WOKV 104.5 FM on the FM stick during our Duel and Duval postgame shows the last couple of Saturday nights and then this morning for an hour. So that was fun and uh, good to have you on there as well. And we're always on ESPN 690. All the platforms on the YouTube right now. Thanks for jumping in on YouTube, on Twitter, of course, Facebook and Twitch, on ESPN690.com, on all the different apps. And, well, uh, maybe it wasn't me that didn't pay the bill. Apparently there are some, like, Internet issues. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that Martino's getting off the hook. But when I got other people texting me at the station, like Rich Jones saying, hey, is your internet working? I'm like, man, we got to let Brent off the hook on this one. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, uh, thanks for hanging. Of course, right in the middle of our show. We've had really good luck, by the way. Uh, so knock on wood, hopefully we'll continue to do that. Maybe just a, a small little problem. Maybe it's outside the building. Maybe something happened. Maybe we'll have to check uh, with all the different services. Uh, but we'll uh, have it rocking for uh, 3 to 6 p.m. Brent and friends coming up over time with Kurtz and Middleton. Rasheen Mathis. Maurice Jones Drew scheduled to join us. Maybe we'll have some special guests along the way. Aaron Schachter will join us in the afternoon and Brian Middleton too. So a uh, lot still to come here on a Monday. Uh, happy Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and I'm sure most of you are out of work. So we appreciate you jumping in wherever you are jumping in. Uh, to end the show, how about the playoff weekend? It was spectacular. Uh, some really good games. We, I thought we were getting blowouts all over the place at times, Casey, and it ended up being terrific. A lot of good theater. Yeah, it was re- it was good. A lot of good games. I mean, obviously the Jags was was what it was, and it was great if you're a Jags fan. Probably not so much if you're a Chargers fan, but again, there's only like 10 of them, so it's fine. And then the, the Dolphins game had no business being that close. Um, if you're a Buffalo fan or you bet on Buffalo to win the Super Bowl, I'd be concerned right about now because a lot of that was on Josh Allen. Uh, Miami gave it everything they had. They do win with Tua, by the way. I, th- I think that's unquestioned. And they had Miami had drops. Like they, they probably should have won even with yeah, Waddle played terrible. Waddle played terrible. The the play call, getting it in, rookie quarterback, the coach, all that. That's a whole thing. But I'd be worried if I was Buffalo. Cincinnati did not look incredible. 
But I, I think it's it's good for the sport that these games that not that really it, we need anything to be better for the NFL. It's already great, but when these games that were supposed to be blowouts or close games, and you see these big teams having to fight off these teams with their backup quarterbacks, it's good theater. It's good theater. But it ended up the way that I think we all thought it was going to end up. I picked the Giants to win. No big deal. They pulled it out. So. I think it's going to be a really good next round, but it was a good day yesterday, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that Skylar Thompson almost beat Joe, uh, sorry, uh, Josh Allen and Tyler Huntley almost beat Joe Burrow is pretty amazing yeah. if you think about it. And on the road. And I I figured Baltimore would come to play, man. They, they are a hard-nosed team, veteran team. And really, you can make the case they should have won. I mean, they re- they had it. You can't reach that ball out from the two-yard line. And I don't know if they would have won the football game in that circumstance, but gosh, the way it turned out, you think they might have. And then Miami, I give that kid a lot of credit. It was an admirable performance. And I thought Huntley was admirable, too. I thought he played better than I thought he would. Uh, he's just not that good. And Thompson's so young, and he's not that good. Doesn't have the arm strength, all those things, in my opinion. But I just thought McDaniel messed it up on that third and 19, way back in their own end. They were playing really good defense. you got to just run the ball, bubble screen to Tyreek Hill, do something. You're probably not going to get the first down. Instead, he goes for the sticks, and he throws a pick, and then the momentum changes. They scored two touchdowns in a row. They were still in it, and he just could not get a play in to the young kid in time. And I get it. The quarterback is supposed to be able to get the team to the line of scrimmage and everything else. But this has been a problem for McDaniel, according to the folks in Miami. And you know going in that you've got a quarterback that hasn't played much. You have to even be more on point. And on the last one, when it was fourth and one, they actually reset the play clock. He got another 25, and they still couldn't get it off. It was just amazing. I, I thought I was watching like a high school football game. where They, they, they actually yeah. could have been called. They had to take three timeouts because of it. They got called for at least two delay of games, one the costliest at the end. And they probably should have been called for like three or four. Mm-hmm. More. I mean, it was. I hate the fact that these teams snap it so late. I hate it. Now, the other guys are good at it. And I'll tell you what, Trevor's really good at the organization of it all. They had that big delay of game down at the one yard line, but that was more of a, a headset communication issue, I think. They are good. Like, when they need to go fast, they go fast. When they need to get the snap off, they usually get the snap off. Like, I think Trevor's really good. I think the veteran quarterbacks are excellent at it. I still don't know why you can't snap it at two. Instead, you have to wait till it goes to zero and even risk it. But uh, the Skylar Thompson in Miami, that was a debacle. Like, that was a tough watch. It Watching was. them break the huddle at eight seconds every time was like, what is going on? Like, you are, if you're a Dolphins fan, like, I don't know how that alone wouldn't have stressed you out. And so you're thinking, if you're a young quarterback who's hardly played, how does that not stress you out? You're supposed to look at the defenses, get people in motion, and beat the clock. Just a terrible situation, I think. And, and again, I know some of it's on him, but to me, that's that's coaching. That's on Mike McDaniel. You have to put your player in a real a better position yep. than that, and, and he didn't do it. So and, and by the way, I also have to give Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins a ton of credit for showing up in Buffalo the way they did. So, like, you can do both. Mm-hmm. Like, you can praise them, and their defense came to play now. So there's a lot to like about what Miami did, but they also maybe should have won the game. Their defense played to win. Their defense won. I mean, you take it away from Josh Allen that amount of times, You not only interceptions, but you force a fumble. You take it back. I mean, the Miami defense is like, hey, we did our part. Like, this is a great offense, and we turned them over multiple times. They're feeling like the Chargers defense. They're like, hey, do something. And they just couldn't get it done. So I it it's tough for Miami because they probably should have won, and they win with Tua. And I know Teddy Bridgewater is, like, broken. I'm putting him in there. Like, just to be real with you, I know his his thumb's broken. He's the backup. He was the emergency if he had to go in. I, I'm i putting him in because he understands how to run the offense. He can get the play call in and just not taking the delay of games. Who knows? And to your point, throw it short to Waddle. Throw it short to Hill and let him cook. Like, that's what you need to do, not these 10, 15-yard outs. Like, it's a rookie quarterback who never was supposed to play. Like, don't put him in that situation. I asked this question. I'm going to end the show with this today. That's this question for weeks, Casey. Are the Jags good? Eh. And obviously they're into the second round of the playoffs. That's pretty good. Yeah. You don't get lucky six weeks in a row, all right? No. You don't just play the Houstons of the world and the Tennessees on their third-string quarterback. It's a couple of those things set up. In fact, when they were down big 27 to nothing, we were talking in the press box. Like, listen, there were some signs that maybe they weren't as good as everybody thought, right? Or, or 
that there, this came with a little help. But when you lose the turnover battle five to nothing, and you come back and beat Justin Herbert and those stars of the, of the Chargers, guess what? You're good. You're good. And you're in the second round of the playoffs. You've won six in a row. You're good. When you have Doug Peterson, you're good. When you have Trevor Lawrence bounce back like that, you're good. When you have a defense that can hold them out of the end zone in the second half, and uh, I forget who mentioned it, maybe it was Steven, four weeks in a row now they've done that, you're good. You're good. The Jaguars are good. The the Buffalo Bills, remember early in the year who they played? Kansas City to start the season? No. Uh, who did they play? Who, who did? Uh, uh, the Rams. The Rams to start the season. Remember when they turned it over like a bunch of times and won the football game going away? Yes. And you were like, wow, man, that's when you know you're a good football team if you can do that. Well, the Jags just did that. They didn't win going away, but they won. They won. It's all that matters. They're that good, makes Brent. You good. They're good. They're dangerous. Well, They're good. They're well, young. And, and look at Buffalo. Like, they are good. They, Josh Allen did all that, and they still won. That's, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you this, though. Right now, this moment in time, I'd rather play Buffalo than the Jags. Oh, me too. Buffalo's gettable right now. I mean, they they have not looked super strong in a, in a while. I mean, they're gettable right now. So Cincinnati, I know you don't want to go to Buffalo, but they got to feel like they can get it. And the Jags, even playing against Kansas City, I know this. They're not scared. They're not worried. They're not going to back down to them. Doug Peterson's going to have them ready to play. The Chiefs and the Bills, although hosting both games... I bet they're tight, Brent. I bet they're tight. Yeah, the only thing I would say about Cincinnati is that offensive line is really beat up now coming out of that game. That's fair. So you're going back to, like, the old but Boro, man. He's tough. He keeps taking hits, and he gets up, and he's, he's experienced that a lot. It, it's going to be a good football game. I think these teams are going to play better. The Obviously, Kansas City didn't play. But the three other teams of the AFC really don't feel like they played that great. It's still one. You know what I mean? Yep. That's a pretty good place to be in. We'll find out. We talk more about it today. We're in a pretty good place to be in right now. Still talking Jags football on a Monday in mid-January. Jags go to the divisional round Saturday, 430 against Kansas City. We'll be there, of course. For Casey Kurtz and Rich Jones, who stopped by, and all of you for listening and hanging in there, we appreciate it. We'll do it again 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Brent and Friends on ESPN 690. I'm Brent Martin. Have a good rest of your Monday, everyone. Do you know a child who is deaf, 